All right, everybody, thanks for joining us. We're going to be talking about the Bible today, hopefully having a great conversation around that. And just to kick us off, I want to kind of personalise it a bit as far as the first time the Bible impacted us. Um, for me, 17 was the age I became a Christian. I had had a kid's Bible at home, hadn't really touched it. And then I was like, right, I think I want to know more about God uh, and I asked this auntie in church, Auntie <laughs> Thelma was her name, and she said, start in Matthew. Uh, so I started in Matthew and I saw people in church highlighting, so I had a pink highlighter. Yeah, yeah. Started in Matthew, Come on. and I started highlighting everything that I thought was good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I got to like the Sermon on the Mount, I was like, mm, ooh, this <laughs> Jesus guy. Yeah. It was like, and, and I remember those times, it was the first time I felt motivated to read the Bible read scriptures but it was like light bulbs were going off in my head and I felt like oh, I wonder if everybody sees this yeah. I can't believe this is in this book it was like it came alive um, and I felt like God was showing me things at, you know like I read the Moses story and I was like oh, this looks like the journey that we do now <laughs> and I genuinely thought I wonder if anyone else on the planet has seen this <laughs> and and so for me 17 I had uh, I really felt God interrupted my life I had a hunger for the Bible and it just came alive and from that moment you know I've had seasons where I felt like yeah and seasons but where it's been better, but I've never not felt like scripture hasn't spoken mm. to me. Mm. How about you, Mims? I, my story's a little bit different. I, I mean, I did have a Bible when I was growing up, um, kids' Bible, like we, most of us do. Um, but we always used to recite Psalm 91. So, uh. it was, so I had a head knowledge understanding of, well, not understand, but head knowledge interaction with the Bible. But I didn't actually understand it, I think, till I was about 18. Mm. And I think, um, it took a different meaning because I was like, God, I want to understand what this actually means. Like, I want to know what this actually, what this actually is trying to say to me. Um, and I remember putting my hand up in church again at 18, even though I'd been a Christian mm. my whole life. Um, and I think it just took a whole new, new meaning at that point. Um, and yeah, I think that's it really. It wasn't, I didn't have, apart from being 18, put my hand up, I didn't have a, Awakening. I think it's just been a progressive journey that I've had yeah. with the Bible. And actually, actually saying that, I think in the last few years, I think I've interacted with the Bible in a deeper way where it has a, a deeper meaning yeah. for me and I've got deeper understanding. And I think for you, like the, like you saying, you had the light bulbs, you think, does everyone see this? Yeah. I think for me, I'm like, oh my gosh, where have I been my whole life? Yeah. Like, and, and I think about people that are a bit older than me and I think, <laughs> <laughs> I think, I think, yeah, I just think, oh, like, how come no one shared these things with me? How come no one's explained what this means? So I've had to yeah. go on my own journey of understanding. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. amazing. In cool. summary. John. Love it. Yeah, so I'm John at the Guildford campus. Um, yeah, <clears throat> really my first memory is about 16, I think, when I stood, really got into the Bible and, and, and my faith. Um, and what I just found was, <clears throat> was starting my day um, as, a, as a teenager, going through lots of adolescent stuff um, of, of starting my day with the Bible. And that became, a, it's, uh, my parents passed me this, this sort of devotional pamphlet called Every Day with Jesus. Oh, yeah. And I just read that for years and years. And that became, you know, nearly 40 years later now. And that has been my habit. Um, oh, wow. but, the, but it's not been long passages. So there are always sort of yeah. nuggets and a bit of explanation. I found that much easier to digest. Mm -hmm. And so I think my journey with the Bible has really been the sort of like picking out the nuggets. And only over time have I seen that it all fits together. And it's actually all from the same book, you know. <laughs> um, and, and I've loved that. I've loved the explanations of what you can get out of a yeah. single verse and stuff that, and, and learned to sort of chew and, on that. And I wasn't good at meditation because meditation used to fall back to sleep, you know, because mm -hmm. I was usually, <laughs> usually in bed. Yeah. But, uh, you know, you're waking up and you're getting something that really carried me through the day. And I remember in those early years um, as, a, as a teenager just finding some verses just like, 
wow, it blew me away. And it just carried me through seasons when I needed peace. And I just, that day, there was a verse on the peace that passes understanding and things yeah. like that. And I just thought, goodness me, this is, this is so relevant to where I am. So, uh, yeah, I lived on those, those nuggets and only later saw, saw how interconnected it all was. Mm. Nice. Rocky. Shalom, Rocky, <laughs> repping Dominion. <laughs> um, I guess my experience has probably been like, I probably experienced most impactfully the Bible through my parents' mouths. Wow. So there's like embodied, yeah. as opposed to like... As in quoting? Yeah, yeah quoting, like yeah. they're walking Bibles. Yeah, yeah. like, yeah, so like, you know, we no weapon formed against you so yeah, prosper. Right. Like, by stripes you are healed. Like, oh. where my people don't have vision, they perish. Mm. Like, all these sure. quotes that were staples in my upbringing yeah. were like biblical truths or related to scripture. So I think my, the most informative, um, ex uh, engaging with the Bible was through what, like my parents' words. Yeah, and then it's only in like my twenties that as I've actually kind of started to explore it as a library of knowledge about God. Yeah. And then also, so probably only in my later tw twenties that the discipline mm. has formed around it in terms of allowing it to speak to me and, and feed me constantly, so rather than going for it as a tool of like, everything's on fire, yeah. let me run to the Bible. <laughs> what did the Bible say? Speak. Yeah. <laughs> Help me, Lord, in the Psalms. Yeah. I am crying to you. Um, <laughs> So like it's only probably in my later twenties now there is a discipline that has formed yeah. because of what I know that it, it is brings life and awakening sure. and it shows me myself and oh, shows me yes. the God that I'm pursuing. So I think it firstly formed because I've been born in a Christian context. It was like almost embodied, mm. and then now it's become more of a discipline of understanding our yeah. tradition and myself and God yeah. in a more kind of daily day. Yeah. Uh, un uh, unpacking. Nice, yeah. great. Does that makes sense. Nice. Yeah. yeah. Hannah. Nice. Um, I think I came to the Bible quite late because um, I thought it was quite boring for a long time. Yeah. Yeah. To be honest. Uh, so yeah, when I was a teenager, I wasn't so interested, and then when I was kind of in my early twenties, I sort of started taking it seriously, and I'm quite an intense person so I was like I'm gonna read all of it like I'm gonna I'm gonna understand all of it and I'm gonna read the footnotes and um it was nice because then I kind of got a sense of like the patterns and the rhythms and up until I don't think I understood it until I read kind of all of it because I was reading like you know maybe a section like here and there and I didn't really understand the whole broader narrative um and when I did that was really enlightening for me so yeah that was good Yes. I think it's interesting. Uh, I would say everyone came from a Christian background. Yeah. The Bible was handed to us through family traditions. Yeah. There'll be lots of people um, who don't have that. Mm. Uh, but I would say my knowledge of the Bible was, was I knew about it, mm. but I'd never engaged with yeah. it yeah. personally. Yeah. Yeah. And the patterns that you're talking about, I remember picking up the New Testament and going, Wait, Matthew, Mark, these are all the same story. <laughs> Wait a second. <laughs> and remember the first time, like, why did they put this four times? Yeah. Yeah, like yeah. this, and then understanding that there are patterns and structure. Yeah. And one of the things we said in the in the video that I recorded about this was, it's not a kids' book. Mm. Um, it is a complex book. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's it's masterfully written, but I think when we come from a tradition uh, where we grew up in a church background, it's sometimes presented mm. as children's stories. Yeah. Yeah. Daniel and the Lions mm. then, yeah. and, and complex like yeah. moral wrestling, yeah. Yeah. you know, Noah's Ark yeah. is yeah. presented with these simplistic felt board if mm. you're old enough, or yeah. now like Veggie Tales or something. Yeah. Yeah. Classic. <laughs> yeah. Vintage. Yeah. Do you know about that? Yeah, so certainly the felt board. <laughs> oh my goodness, that's right. But it, it, it's like, I think it's, it's both pros and cons of coming from a church background yeah. or a non-church yeah. background. Mm -hmm. Coming at a, at a blank slate yes. is not yeah. a bad thing yeah. because I felt I had to unpack a lot of things yeah. of what I'd yeah. learned.